Hey everyone, very warm welcome to the Marketing Bytes podcast. So today, live on the call, I have Claude Diamond, uh, the one and only Claude Diamond. And uh, we're going to talk about how you can improve your business and your life through the use of sales. Now, Claude has two homes, one in Winter Park, Colorado, and one in San Diego, California. Is that right? That's right. And a few others I don't talk about. Okay, a few secret, secret hideouts. Wait, wait a second. Where's your Swedish accent? <laughs> you don't sound like Bjorn Borg or anything. No, I know. So I'm originally from England. Oh. Uh, so I moved to Sweden two years ago, and uh, hence the uh, very uh, Queen's English oh. accent I've got going on. <laughs> jolly good, jolly good. So now you're a Viking. Technically, yeah, I guess I'm a Viking. My ancestors were probably Vikings anyway, so uh, I've probably got some Viking blood in me. Uh, <laughs> great. So Claude is the creator of the gut sales system. And let me see if I've got this right. So the gut sales system helps people from a wide range of injuries, uh, injuries, industries, <laughs> if I can get my words it right. Be, it might be injuries after this, uh, after this interview. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll play it by ear and see how it goes. And uh, you help people to learn what you refer to as the million dollar skill, which is sales, right? And how to sell without being fake, uh, without scripts, uh, without presentations. Uh, and you teach people to use influence and persuasion to make more money and improve their businesses. Did I sum that up uh, yeah, pretty I well? I have nothing left to add. I mean, you, you covered it. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It, it sales is the million dollar skill. I think so many of us are struggling to have freedom, be entrepreneurs, have our own business, and we focus in on the wrong things, or we give mm. too much focus on, on the products, the services, the bells, the whistles, uh, the gimmicks, too much on marketing, spend way too much on marketing. Um, mm. I've about, been there. That's one of my pet peeves. Instead of studying how to get someone else to just like you, to respect you, to listen to you, pay attention to you. So you don't come, you know, today when we say, um, oh, gee, I got an appointment with a sale. I got to meet this salesman today. It's not a pot. It's like meeting uh, your proctologist or something. Yeah. Okay. Dentist appointment. <laughs> not looking forward to it. I want to Absolutely. Make, I want to make sales so fun. I think I'm the only person in the world, the only sales trainer in the world who uses the word fun. We can have fun in sales. We can be totally free for the rest of our lives. I work for my homes. I never take vacations. I live in places other people go to for vacations. Uh, I make a great living helping people. I feel good about that. I also feel good about being financially free, mm. mortgage free, debt free. Um, it just gives you peace of mind. I don't need a Lamborghini in the garage, but it's great to go to bed and not think about how to pay the, pay a bill or something like that. I've been there. I've been on that other side. Absolutely. And everything I'm talking about today uh, came from sales, came from learning how to just, my daughter once gave me a compliment. I'll sum it up. Uh, she said, dad, you're just comfortable in your own skin. Is that the, mm. greatest, is that the greatest compliment in the world? Absolutely. Yeah. Self-love is, is really, really important, especially if you want I other people to like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quite possible. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, this is off to an awesome start. So I wanted to start from the beginning, Claude. I wanted to hear a little bit of history. So would you mind sharing with me how you got started in the world of sales and, and why you decided to pick this particular skill to master? over all the other things you could have gone in. I mean, you could have gone into real estate, um, you know, maybe another sector. You could have gone into uh, stocks or investing. Why did you pick sales? Um, sales actually came to me out of real estate. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm the former world's worst salesman. I say that freely, honestly. I hated sales. I think um, I, uh, making phone calls to strangers who didn't treat me very nicely or very short or snippy with me or mm. hung up on me, did not make me feel good as a person. And so I think my, I think one of the big assets I bring is I understand what other people are going through. 
uh, that fear, uh, that, 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 uh, that imposition on your ego, attack on your ego. I got started mm. in, I was in corporate America. I have a business degree, so I have law degree, I have a doctorate in law. Uh, I was not happy working for other people. So I did what a lot of people do here in the States and in your country. Um, is I went into real estate. Uh, I still am in real estate. I love it. Um, but I absolutely sucked at it. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I had bad tenants, bad properties, and um, I went to a lot of gurus, read a lot of books, and I had enough knowledge mm. to be dangerous but not successful. And I did one really smart thing, and maybe this is a takeaway for your audience. I found someone who was very wealthy, very successful, and he was my mentor. And mm. he was phenomenal on the phone. Uh, this is pre inter I'm not going to try to age myself too much, but this is pre-internet, okay? Internet, I think, really got started in the 1990s. This was pre-internet. And he'd get on the phone, and he'd close people in real estate deals in one phone call. And I never saw anyone else do that. To this right. day, I talk That was unheard of. Uh, that still is kind of unheard of, because I know in England, like – people didn't believe that you could close deals over the phone. They thought you had to go meet the seller and all this stuff. So, Well, I, that's what I was doing. I was getting in my car, knocking on doors, doing mailers, driving around in traffic. Um, mm. And I got, and I was so bad at sales. So I was atrocious at it. I, I would rather do anything. I even made up excuses so I wouldn't have to make sales calls. <laughs> oh, it's time to clean the bathroom. You know, mm. <laughs> And I just wasn't making any money and I was very uncomfortable with it. And I said, gee, how come a few people do so well, make so much money, they're so phenomenally successful and most of the people I talk to are struggling like I am, if they're being honest. And my, yeah. mentor, my mentor gave me the gift of how to be comfortable in my own skin, how to just be myself, how to ask questions like a doctor, a lawyer, or other professional, how to how to just talk with people in, a, in an adult to adult fashion and get information, qualification, and decide whether there was something there for both of us or I get to fire them. Mm. It changed every, my life changed at that moment when I learned sales from my mentor, Max. I've written a lot of books about Max, by the way. They're on my uh, webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com. Uh, so I give them away for free. Uh, maybe I should give one away for free to your audience tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they'd be thrilled Great. to hear a little bit more, more about that. a million dollar skill, ladies and gentlemen. Learn it. It's a science. It's an art form. And you've got mm. to study it and you've got to practice it. You've got to be consistent. And if you're willing to pay the price, not money, but hard work, learning the science and art form, your life will change that minute in your business. I guarantee it. I 100% agree. And it's, it's the one skill where you really can get results quickly. I mean, you can spend hours and hours and hours trying to tweak marketing funnels and things, but to, to iron out all the creases in a marketing funnel, it can take months. But if you get someone on the phone, they want what you're buying and you have the ability to sell it to them, then you can get results, I mean, tomorrow why or today. People, and you gotta ask yourself the question, Oliver, why do people buy more often from some salespeople but not from the other 99%. What is the magic that those one percenters have? The top people in their field, why are they consistently always the, the sales leaders? They make the most money, whatever they do. What, what do they have that nobody else has? What is the secret? That's a great question. I'd love to hear your answer. <laughs> I'm doing both sides here. I'm, doing the, I'm asking the question. I'm the, body <laughs> of the interviewee. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it is learning the psychology, human behavior. What makes us tick? And my favorite word, empathy. What are they thinking? What are they feeling? Can I put myself into their shoes? And say, you mm. know, I think we sound, I think most people in, in, in sales sound like a clown. They give mm. a presentation. Presentations are nonsense because mm -hmm. they're immature. We're giving a presentation to someone. It's like you walking into your doctor's office and he says, okay, Oliver, on the table, you know, let's do that surgery. But doctor, you haven't examined me yet. Doesn't matter. Let's go ahead. That's what salespeople do. They just give a presentation. They throw out a lot of crap 
uh, features, benefits, and everything. And everything. And the, what does the prospect think when this person just gives this premature presentation? What do they think? Well, they're thinking, when is this going to end? When is this going to end? This guy just wants his hand on my wallet. He doesn't mm. care about me. He's manipulative. He's tricky. He's smarmy. He doesn't care about me. I'm going to raise the defense shield. I'm going to lift the, uh, what do you call that the, in England by the castle? The drawbridge. I'm going to mm. lift, got a few castles there. I've been to a few of them. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, he's going to lift the draw. They, they put up this defense shield. Okay, because they're worried that you're going to try to manipulate them and make them do something they don't want to do. They don't like you. They don't trust you. They get bored with you very quickly. That's why they treat salespeople so badly. And then we have all this fear and anxiety inside. There's a huge stigma around sales. Like most people, since they were young, their parents have told them, don't trust the salesman. It's almost like a dirty word if you want to try and become a salesman now there's this huge stigma around it. I think because of these presentations and all this pressure and all this scarcity that, that salesmen apply, I think that's the reason why. What, so, did, what, did your, what did your mom say when you're a little boy and nappy's going outside to play? Don't <laughs> things, right? Yeah. Mm, Maybe exactly. you were still in your little diapers or whatever, but <laughs> yeah. your mom said it to you. My mom mm. said it to me in New York City. Don't talk to strangers. Look both ways across the street. Do you have a handkerchief if you got to blow your nose? These are things that are in your mind. They're in your subconscious. They're there forever. And then we mm. grow up and we're, we're adults in the big bad world. We want to make money. What do we have to do to make money? Talk. Talk to strangers. Mainly to strangers. But how do we make it so it's fun? It's, uh, it's an adult to adult mature conversation while we're having fun and you're solving their problems as the doctor, the lawyer, uh, the accountant, the, the professional who has a patient or a client come to them. Instead of going back to that presentation, you ask questions to do a diagnosis and you even mm -hmm. ask permission. We call that agenda right up front. You say, can I ask you a few questions maybe then I, so I know more about you, Oliver, and then maybe I can help you with this problem, buying, selling a home, investing, or whatever I'm selling, dental floss, doesn't matter. I ask questions. So that's why no presentations, and can I get real crazy here? No scripts. Wow. See, that's a huge, huge difference in the way that you teach sales and the way that I've seen so many other people yeah. teach us. So because I'm right, and they're teaching old shit. Can I say shit? It, of course you can. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I don't want to offend people in Sweden. But script, <laughs> when you get somebody read a script or it's the same old banter, what are you saying about your, what are you saying about how you feel about that prospect? They're all the same. They're all mm, just another lead. Just another lead. I just got to read this stupid thing there. What does the prospect think? Oh my God. It's just, he talks to everybody like this. He doesn't care about me. There's mm. no empathy there. There's nothing there. He just wants to make a sale. He has, when you ask questions, when your doctor, your lawyer, somebody asks you questions, what do you think they're creating an atmosphere of caring? Mm. You think they care and you also think they're an authority as well. Amen, brother. Well said. So I'm fascinated to hear about the, the very, very early beginnings of guts. So when did you decide that, you know, sales has been tainted with all this nonsense for a long time and you wanted to burst something into the world that would inspire change and help people sell more authentically? Well, I go back to my mentor. He was what you call a natural sales guy. A born closer. One close. I could, when I saw him close on a real estate deal and make more money in one phone call, and get commitment and contracts and every and money and all the things that in one phone call. And here I am, I'm like a chicken running all over the place. And I said, Oh my gosh, if I could just, if I could just learn this, but he, he was a natural. He didn't mm. understand the science behind it. He just did it as a way. And there's a few people like that. I had mm. to learn it. Right. But what I did is I started, I listened to him, you know, um, two ears, one mouth. You know, kept my mouth shut, listened, watched a lot. And I started studying psychology. I studied right. different psych, uh, ver areas of psychology. I have studied hypnotherapy. I have studied NLP. I have read uh, everything I can about people who have this amazing ability of communication and persuasion. 
And I found out a way to teach this to people. I teach it one-on-one. -on -one. And I find that's just the best way to treat, uh, to practice with someone, role play. I love role playing. Mm. And that's the way I learned from my mentor. My life changed at that moment. I became more confident. I could, so when you become more confident and you have the tools, I can now speak to more people. More people I speak to, the more money I make, the more sales I make. And that's kind of the, it started with seeing an expert in persuasion and then trying to categorize it. Why did he use mm -hmm. that word imagine? Why is he asking questions with redirection? Why is he using stroking, nurturing, and empathy? Uh, these are the things I found out a way to put them down in paper from other scientists and doctors about these. Dr. Cialdini, Dr. Eric Byrne, uh, De uh, Dale Carnegie, a lot of these mm. people take different pers uh, parts of it, but none of them had a, what we call a system. I have right. a, a guts is a three-step system. So someone has in their mind three steps, easy to memorize. And then they know, well, let's, let's uh, no presentation, no script, no begging for the order. Let's just have a dialogue here. Let me find out what the issue or the problem is. And then let me ask questions and qualify that person to solve that problem. And then let me offer some solutions in my presentation at the end. So are those the three steps that you just outlined there? Is that how you walk through? Agenda, mm -hmm. agenda, number one, think of a staircase going upstairs. First step mm -hmm. is agenda. For a second step is qualification. No sense right. selling somebody who doesn't have the money. Mm -hmm. have Very the money. key. It, it's kind of a waste of time. I'm big on the old three minute timer thing here. And then the final step is basically commitment slash close getting commitments, getting up the yes ladder, and then getting them to give it to you because they have decided the value you're offering, how you can help them remove the problem or increase their enjoyment or financial stability. Agenda, qualification, commitment, close. If you can memorize these three steps and then learn the tools of learning how to ask questions and guts, you are free the rest of your life. Mm. A million dollar skill. Yeah, it's hard. Now, I don't want to make it that, it, it takes time. I work at this every day, teaching students. I have students in 18 different countries. I've been doing teaching gut sales um, uh, for a long time, and 30 years. And the thing about it is uh, I practice it every day with my students and with my own real estate deals and selling my sales training program and products. And so every day I get to work at it. So how could somebody who's absolutely terrified of picking up the phone and you know sales doesn't come naturally to them what are the steps they could take to go from being in that space to gradually improving on their skills getting better and maybe even getting close to mastering it um i you know what if any of you uh, just to get them started i have several books i've written on sales and i'd be glad to send a free one to your audience if you'd like um, fantastic we'll have to do that yeah, yeah, we'll have to get a link organized. They can either go to my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com, and or you can I'll give you a special link and they can they can download my new book. Uh, I just Great. Book, the rules of the gut sales method. Uh, 50 different rules on how to qualify, have fun, how to not waste a lot of time, um, how to not spend a lot of money running around doing marketing that doesn't give you quality leads. So I'll give that to your audience for free at the end. You can put a link in or something like that. Fantastic. We'll get a link up on the show notes and uh, that'll be available. I give you stuff away. Ask yourself why I just did that, by the way. Is that part of persuasion? Yeah. That's a good question. Why did you just do that? Because I'm a stranger to most people. Nobody woke up this morning and said, gee, I'm going to call up Claude Diamond and give him uh, money for his program or anything. I don't know. <laughs> so my way of introducing myself besides doing interviews like this is giving away things for free. So I stop being a secret, hoping that someone will say, you know what? I like this guy. He's a little crazy yank, but you know what? <laughs> Maybe he has some value. Maybe he can overcome, help me to make more sales, make more money, get comfortable on the phone, get more quality leads for zero cost. If he can do that, that's value. And, that's and then you transcend from a stranger being a little bit closer to a friend, right? If you've provided value, people warm up to you and the chance of them buying is, is a lot higher. The it's most a very valuable lesson. The most from sales trainers, Oliver, is rapport and bonding. 
rapport and mm-hmm. bonding. And for most people, most uh, salespeople use it in the wrong way. You have to earn that. Okay, you have to earn that for people. How do you get someone? People do business with people they like and trust. How do you get somebody to like you? Mm. How do you get you provide them? them value? Give them value. Like give them something. Results in advance. Give them something in advance without asking anything in return. Okay. Mm. Uh, create incentives. Um, don't give them a boring presentation, but ask questions that show empathy, interest, caring. See, you, then you can ask them, say, gee, Oliver, if I could help you solve this problem and make more money and make, uh, be more comfortable on the phone, what would that be worth to you? I've made a decision. I'd love to help you. You mind if we talk about, if you'd like to work with me, do you mind if we talk about money and getting this thing started? Or you can just fire me right now. What would you like to do? See, this is another point. I'm sorry to interrupt, but have you ever met a salesperson that honest? No, not, definitely not. Yeah. And also another point that I've noticed is, is you're always very direct rather than beating around the bush or trying to manipulate and achieve things in a very underhanded way. When you're ready to talk about money and talk about closing the sale, you just bring it up. And is that a key part of guts as well? I think being, we don't have, I think when we're, we're kidding ourselves, why not be, why can't we be honest with people? You Mm. don't mind paying me money if I give you value. Absolutely. If I give you something that you want, people want to buy. They they just don't want to be sold. I think Tommy Hopkins said that. It's a great quote. Mm. So if I go to somebody and I'm definitely honest and straightforward and transparent, uh, with them to such a degree, they're off. Uh, there's a psych- This is a psychological move that I discovered a long time. When I do things that other people will not do, be totally honest with something. I these are called pattern interrupts, and so mm. they don't know how to deal with me. You know, <laughs> you know when you go the old fashioned salesman. Well, would you like it on Friday or Thursday? You know, or three thirty or four thirty. They know what you're doing. And, you know, and that people are not stupid. Why should we treat them that way? To me, that's crazy. Why not just be up front with them? And I, miss, miss, you know, uh, Mr. Denier, I'd love to do business with you. I think I can help you. I've made a decision that if I work with you for a while, um, I think I can show you how to increase your sales and feel wonderful about yourself in the next 30 days or less. Well, how do you feel about that, sir? What would you like to do? So you open it up and you, you, you lead with a question oh, about what they would like. Up front and people mm. say, gee, I like this. I even tell them, please fire me. You don't have to say, go ahead, let's do a role play here. I, this is my methodology of teaching. Tell me you want to think about it. Yeah, um, sounds good. But is it okay if I just take a few days to think about it? No. Whoa, what do you mean no? Well, you asked and I just, uh, honestly, you know, when people say to me they want a few days to think about it, they've got to go to church and pray and light a candle <laughs> uh, or speak to their lovely spouse. You know what they're saying? They're saying they're worried. They're saying about no. They're, they're saying no. You're right. Because they don't want to hurt your feelings. Bingo. That's the, mm. the emotional quotient. That's what they're really saying, Oliver. And you know what, Oliver? I'm here for you back in the role play. I'm here for you. You don't have to do something or worry about sparing my feelings. I'm a big boy. I can take it. Why don't we just say it's over? It's been a pleasure to speak with you. I wish you well in all your endeavors. And, um, and we'll just say we won't do business. Now that it's over, though, can I ask you a question before we go? Go ahead. You came to me with a lot of problems. You said you're uncomfortable on the phone. You don't make phone calls. They, sometimes you go days without talking to people in your real estate business. You don't return phone calls and everything. That problem's good. If that problem remains, how's that going to affect your income? Well, it's, it's going to be terrible. I mean, the bills are going to get harder to pay. Yeah. Business is going to get more complicated. Life's going to be more of a struggle. And you must have called me for a reason to fix that problem. Now, tell me if I'm right or wrong here. No, you're absolutely right. Is the reason, and you, is the reason you and I, because I'd love to work with you, and I feel very good about this conversation. Is the reason we're not working together because of the money? What I charge? Um, well, it is quite expensive for me. Quite yeah, very expensive. Why do you think people pay me so much money? I assume it's because you're offering something of value. You're right. Now, whatever you say, I'm right. If as long as it's positive, it's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then, but did you off the role play now? 
Did you see, I, I took it away. You're not allowed to think about it. I, I said, it's over. We're still friends. Which shocks people. When you wow. say you're not allowed to think about it, they want to go, huh? Wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> it was just a pattern interrupt. Exactly. They're off balance. Oh my God. No one's ever said mm. that before. Uh, what does he mean? I can't, I'm not allowed to think about it. You know, I'm the authority figure here. I am the doctor in the room. I am not going to play these little games that people play. Dr. Eric Byrne, uh, Dr. Thomas Harris, who wrote Transactional Analysis, say we all play these little games instead of just let's be adults in the room. Let's not be the parent who's critical or, or let's uh, be the immature child. Let's be adults. Let's be men in the room. Mm. And let's stop the nonsense. And maybe somebody has to start telling the truth in business and say, you know what, I believe in my product, I believe in my service, it's okay to say no, but you still have the problem, and that's why we qualify what we did before. And we go like, and did you notice I went back into selling again? Now mm. that it's over, can I ask you one last question? Did you, did you hear that part? I did, yeah, that was yeah. brilliant. I think we're gonna go over a half hour, by the way. Uh <laughs> that's fine by me, that's fine by this is too interesting for us to stop now, so. <laughs> Okay, so I have, a, I have a question for you. So I focus a lot on marketing. Um, a lot of my audience focus a lot on marketing, possibly because it's easier than actually getting on the phone. So let's say someone's an expert in their field. Let's say they've got an email list of maybe a few hundred people. They're just getting started. Um, how can they apply sales skills and the guts methodology to quit just building lists and tweaking funnels and making sales pages look nice and actually start to make some money? What would be some steps they could take to, to do this? People are, you brought up a very good point, by the way, thank you. People are spending an amazing amount of money on, can I use a bad word again? I hate bullshit marketing. Farley. Bullshit mm. marketing. They're spending, the ROI is dreadful. It's like they're back in 1950 and these gurus are telling them to do mailers or buy mail lists or mm. have auto dialers or text strangers and bother them. I don't want to bother people. I want to mm. attract people who see that I have a solution with my product or service uh, on there. And I think we're doing all this other stuff, mm. paying all this money because we're scared of doing the one thing that can make us money today. Why am I in business? To make money today, to get a commitment today or to get out today fire that prospect. They're scared to do direct marketing. And we've lost mm. this skill set. Technology is wonderful. We're using it right now. I, I love that. I'm on video all day long with people all over the world teaching guts. And I love the video. But we have lost the skill of direct selling, direct marketing. I don't care if we're selling uh, an, a brand new uh, a 777 airplane or we're selling dent or dental floss. This is my AirPods, but it looks like dental floss. <laughs> yes, but it does. Uh, <laughs> the thing about it is we've lost that skill. I mean, people are dating today where they're texting first and things like that, Tinder and all that. Not, nothing wrong with that. It keeps us at a distance from people. But do you think, and I give this challenge to my students, can you go on a line in a Starbucks, in a Jamba Juice, and can you initiate a conversation with a total stranger? Well, it's possible. Scary, but possible. How are you going to do business if you cannot have an honest, direct dialogue with that prospect at some point in the business relationship? Sooner or later, you've got to do this stuff face to face. That's Sooner such a good later, point. I I'm think what sell, happens a lot of the time is by texting. Exactly. I think a lot of the time people are using technology almost as a distraction to, to push away the possibility of them being rejected. I think that's the bottom line. It hurts. A je a rejection may, doesn't make us feel good. We don't like to be rejected. So we stay away from the one thing that can make us money because our tender little sensitive feelings might get hurt. For, to that, I say tough shit. Have enough self-esteem, mm. enough confidence. Believe in yourself and your product and service. Be direct, be honest. Learn a system of sales so you can be that person. And when you get off the phone, go back to being Oliver or Claude. But when you get on that phone, you've got to make magic happen. So if you had to give, say, three action steps to somebody who's got a list of, of, of marketing leads, hasn't made any money from it yet, what would they be? Pick up the phone and call those people, but don't sound like anyone else. Be spontaneous. Be original. 
and I know some people are listening to this, um, have a sales system that works, learning how to ask questions to get that prospect emotionally involved. The million dollar rule, people make immediate business decisions emotionally. They only justify them logically later on. You've got to, you've got to do that. But when you get on the phone with people, sound different. Because if you sound like the same people who call at dinner time and annoy us, what's the, what's the result? What do we do when we get that annoying phone call? Well, we get annoyed and we, we try to ignore it. Take me off your list. Click. Hang mm. up. Go away. And sometimes they say nastier things, right? But if, yeah. we, but if we call people on that list and everything, uh, say hello. Hello. Hey, Oliver Claude Diamond, I'm sorry it took me so long to get back to you. Um, I've got your name and number here on my, on my list here. Um, why am I calling today? Would you help me out? I'm a little embarrassed. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, Claude, Claude, could it be something about... A, yes, we are selling at the moment. Oh, I thought you sold it already. Uh, no, no, still haven't sold it. No, not yet, what's anyway. The, what's the... That's a, your house is over there overlooking um, uh, Hyde Park, one of the nicest areas, okay? Um, ha, a house in Hyde Park overlooking that beautiful park and the gardens and everything, and that hasn't... What's the problem here? Well, we're not sure. I mean, I know it needs a few repairs and it's been on the market for a little while, but we really are uh, anxious sure. to get rid of it. Give it to a realtor or somebody, right? You, or have you done that already? We've done that already. Yeah, it's been on the marketplace, but it's just not getting too much traction. Oh, well, maybe you should just keep that. How long have you had the house, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, it's been five years now that we've owned the property. Great neighborhood. Well, never go wrong with a house by the park there. Keep it another five, ten years. Why sell it? Uh, well, the thing is, we're actually relocating, so we're in a bit of a rush. We kind of need to get rid of it soon. When you say rush, six months, nine months? Well, less, a lot less than that. If possible, maybe one or two months would be you preferred. You know, you just reminded me. I had a friend with the same problem, and he didn't really pay attention to the sale of the house, and he had some problems like you were talking about, and he had to move far, very far away. And the house, he had two mortgages, two tax payments, insurance. He, uh, he had to fly back and forth internationally to take care of the house. And, um, oh, it, the windows broke and, and the heater broke. It was a night. Put the stress on his finances and marriage. Yeah, I, I shouldn't have even told you this story. I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, that is, I mean, exactly what we're trying to avoid. I mean, we, we can't handle two mortgages right now. So, yeah, we do need to get rid of the property. Uh, is there... A way you could help or I don't, know. I don't know it's a good question I don't know um, let me ask you this suppose there was a way I could help you sell this home for a fair price in the next 30 days or less uh, that isn't anything you want to take care of right now is it uh, I th we might be interested yeah no that sounds how do you make sounds... decisions in your family Oliver is this, are you, um, do you have a significant other or are you the authority figure in, in your family or how does it work I like to think so. Yeah, I like to think so. When she's not around, I'm the authority at least. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> I love the role play because this is go on for days. I love role play. It's fantastic. It. It's so helpful to know how things work, you know in a live action, in a, in a role play like that. Uh, play back that role play that we just did, which was brilliant. You did great. Oh, well, and you read right off that script that I prepared, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I've got it right here. Yeah, it's over. Claude no, Diamond is a, is a genius, yeah. <laughs> did I give you a presentation about how wonderful I am and all the things that, did I give you a presentation? Not at all. In fact, you just pretty much asked questions and then empathized and then told stories which i found fascinating yes if this was a cold call too what was mm. my opener hi there i'm with um abc real blah, blah 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 <laughs> today uh, what did i do how was my what was my opener um it was something like are you trying to sell your house or something like that was that oh, no, no no it wasn't it was um why am i calling you today was i confused a little, that was, was I acting a little off balance? I'm sorry, I got your number here in front of me. Why am I calling you today? 
and and all that. It, does that sound like, um, why am I acting that way? I was a thespian for a moment. And, and instead of sounding like the raging professional giving a presentation, I acted a little confused or lost. Coy, and it, it opens up the, the possibility for me to ask you questions rather than feeling like I need to just hang up and, and, and get away. Did you feel the emotion to rescue me? Maybe That's a really time. interesting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is I wanted to try and help you out. Mm. Okay. You go, in, you go past the swimming pool and you see a little puppy that's d d in the middle and it's all disoriented and lost and everything. Are you going to throw a life preserver or swim out to the puppy? Are you going to help the puppy? Of course. You're yeah, yeah, you do anything. Rescue. We love to rescue and everything. So these are different moves, Psycho areas of psychology that I have studied and honed and practiced. I, I go places, I study people, I watch them. Why do they do the things they do, play the games they do? And if we can learn to anticipate those games or those moves, back to empathy, even on the phone on a cold call, uh, Oliver, we are mm. in control, we have fun, and we go to the bank so much off, more often. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. I mean, yeah. I feel like we've just had a snapshot of exactly how powerful the guts sales method can be uh, when it's put in action. So I'm definitely going to prepare um, that free free book that you so kindly offered to my audience. And if they want to go out and get more information uh, about what techniques were used just now and how they can make maybe phone calls to their marketing list or whatever, then that's the resource they can go and check out. So. I wanted to kind of begin to close by asking you a little bit about uh, how you've built your audience, Claude, because my audience are a bunch of experts fascinated by marketing and they're looking to monetize their expertise and their knowledge. And a big part of that is actually building a following. So I've noticed that you've got a load of YouTube videos and you've got tons of content out there. What are the most effective methods that you've used to actually grow your following uh, over the years? Um. I go into marketing with the attitude that I'm a secret. Nobody Interesting. Woke, nobody woke up this morning and said, hey, let me call up Claude Diamond and give him a shitload of money. And <laughs> no, I go, I'm a secret. They don't know who I am. I have to brand myself. I do that by putting out contemporary content consistently that's either entertaining, amusing, informative with no commercials in there. I put out, I have 750 last count videos on YouTube. I do Instagram. I do Facebook every day. I do um, YouTube videos. I said uh, uh, new videos. I do live periscopes and YouTube live and, and things like, and Facebook live. I'm constantly putting out content to introduce myself to people. That's number one. Number two, I give free things away. I just gave away a free book. I give away mm. free consultations, 15 minutes. It's my way of introducing myself to people and letting them know I think I have something of value that can help improve their life, make them more confident, increase their sales. So I, did I answer your question? Um, it was a brilliant answer. And, and one thing that I have noticed with you as well, unlike a lot of the, the sort of gurus out there, um, I mean, at the end of every video, you say, I do answer my own phone. Why not? So, you know what just yeah. stresses me? Now you got me emotional. I, I talk to people all day long, and, they, and some, they, they give tens of thousands of dollars to gurus who are eloquent speakers, but they won't talk to them. I had a mm. person yesterday, word of honor. He said, I gave $40,000 to some goofy program, uh, you know, uh, Get Rich Overnight Wealth generating program. And, mm -hmm. uh, I, and he said, Claude, I have a problem with sales. I said, why don't you call the guy you gave all that money to? And he said, well, he won't answer his phone. He won't call me back. He gives me to his assistant. Well, an assistant who's an employee does not understand the principles of wealth creation and persuasion. You need to learn from the guy who's actually done it, if he or she has actually done it. And that annoys me to my core. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to be the, if I'm the only person that says, call me, I answer my own phone, 970-281-5151. See how I slid that in there? Uh, <laughs> Love it. Or go to ClaudeDiamond.com and I have free information, free consultation, free things for you as your way of discovering who I am. And maybe we can make a mutual decision to do business and solve your problems.
and then you can have a house in Hawaii and California and Colorado. You can have your bills paid and you can have the freedom that we all want in this short thing we call life. Isn't that important? Of course, of course. Well, Claude, I absolutely love your approach to marketing. I absolutely love your approach to sales, uh, especially. And uh, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to have this interview with me today. I'm sure people got massive amounts of value from it. Thank you. It was wonderful. I'm sorry if I was a little shy and reluctant today, but not at all. But this was great. This was a lot of fun. And thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. So if people want to go find your stuff, what's the easiest way uh, for them to get in your touch? Your audience is so intelligent. I don't have to give phone numbers and all that commercial. They just have to type in Claude Diamond, like a diamond ring, and they'll find me, videos, YouTube. They'll go to my webpage, ClaudeDiamond.com. That's all they have to do. Fantastic. I'm sure you will uh, we'll be getting some mutual followers soon. Thank you so much, Claude, and uh, I'll catch you soon. Take care. Thank you.